Hello, my name is Anne McElhenney. And my name is Phelan McAleer. Welcome to the Anne and Phelan Scoop. Uh, what's on the show today, Anne? What's on the show today? Well, it's, for, it's the last week in September, shockingly. That's a big shock to me, by the way. I don't think I should be on the show. No, maybe think. not. Maybe not. I think people, everyone knows that. We're getting lots of really nice messages from people all over the place. People are loving on the movie, like really loving on the movie. And it's it's so it's so wonderful, actually. After uh, all the work, it's really, really great. As I, as I say, the, the, the critics, everyone everyone loves it except the critics. So, yeah, it's a My Son Hunter movie. It's um, Hunter Biden is trending uh, so much uh, all along. And... Uh, the my son, the words "my son hunter" trended, I think, something like fifteen times in four days after the film was released, um, and it keeps trending every so often. People really, really love the movie. You can go on Twitter and see how much they love it. We're going to bring you some of those reviews and comments uh, later on in the show. What else, Anne? About well, during the filming of uh, My Son Hunter, I sat down for a conversation with Gina Carano, the great Gina Carano. Who's in the movie. Who's and, in the movie, And obviously. this interview is in Serbia. Yes, and we hear why she wanted to be a part of the My Son Hunter movie and why she is very proud of being an Italian-American. Uh, yes, and in other movie news, actually it's a very movie-heavy uh, show this yes. week. Yes, in other movie news, the Toronto Film Festival has just promoted, uh, just featured a movie promoting terrorism against Texans. And of course, it was a huge hit at the festival, actually uh, against fossil fuel, uh, the fossil fuel industry and Texans. Unbelievable. Unbelievable. Um, and boy, did, uh, you know, I wonder how many fossil fuels were expended in traveling oh, yeah. to the Toronto Film Festival and heating the Toronto Film Festival in and a September. film crew, by the way, and a film crew. I don't know many film crews out there who bring all of their equipment to have it run by, you know, solar panels. I don't think so. Yeah. There's another movie, Anne, that you know about. Um, it's, it's one that liberals loved until they were told. I mean, they, they watched it, they loved it, and then they're told, you, you can't love it. So tell us about that. Um, Unbelievable. Fantastic story in the New York Times. It's, it's, it's just so instructive. Salem hasn't read it. I'm going to read a little bit of this fantastic New York Times story about a documentary. What's the documentary called? Jihad Rehab. Okay, let, I'm looking forward to yes, that. Yes, okay. Jihad Rehab, which was loved and loved. I mean, loved by everyone until it wasn't loved by anyone. They because they were because, told not to. Because, you know, a little bit, little bit of a problem with the color of the woman who made the documentary. But yes. anyway. Yeah, yes, so and the, uh, we have a story now on the getting out of on bail madness, where you can oh, yeah. get out on bail for yes. anything. And now it seems you can kill an 18-year-old for being a Republican and still get out on bail in North Dakota. In North Dakota. What a shocker. And our, and I, it's been a bit of an absence with the recipes. And I know a few of you have been very annoyed about that and missed the recipes. I have a very, very simple breakfast recipe using, of course, the air fryer that you're not going to want to miss. So join us for that at the very end. But we're going to start by talking about the My Son Hunter news. And as I said, people have been writing some fantastic reviews. We've had, they're all over the place, you know. Somebody wrote here, Slim Rummy, when no one will tell the truth, you just got to do it yourself. Well done. I've already pre-ordered the movie, the truth that the media won't tell, you know. Um, looks amazing. Davi is brilliant. And Gila will never, never be shut down. Biggest movie of the fall. Yeah, so That's fantastic. Another comment, another comment. It is excellent. A nuanced film with top-notch acting and pasting. Entertaining, funny, shocking, disturbing, and eye-opening. You know, yeah. and then shout out to Robert Davi. I remember the first movie I ever saw him in was Raw Deal. Yeah. And then Rose Blake, what did she yeah, say? Yeah, yeah. And she said, it's freaking hilarious. Way funnier than Wayne's World. The downfall. Oh, she oh, she thinks that Hunter looks like Eric Trump. I don't think he looks like Eric Trump. But a lot of people, as I said, were writing really nice things about Gina. People love Gina. I mean, people just yeah. love Gina Carano. And we obviously love Gina. It was just so great to get to work with her and to get her to come to Serbia. It was actually Brian Godawa's dream he you know when he wrote the script yeah. he had this this character in it and he had written you know whatever the character name and whatever and then in brackets he had literally written in the script really hoping we could get Gina Carano for this role and we did and we're so so glad we did and it was great so I sat down with her in Serbia and said to her like why you know why did you want to do this like why did you want to do this in the first place and and how did you deal with the naysayers who said don't do this this could be this this could be political or whatever let's let's hear what you said there I'm Gina Carano, and we are on the set of My Son Hunter. I want to know everything that's on that laptop that can ruin my erection. I got the script, and I thought it was just hilarious. I was just uh, fascinated of how censored this story had been, um, and the double standards of, like, if this had been somebody else's story, it would have been all over the news, and so why wasn't this being um, told? Watching Robert Davi direct is like watching a movie. You really trust him. He has an eye, a talent. He makes you really proud of being an Italian-American. <laughs> 
So I'll tell you what's going down. Devin Archer is telling Joe Biden he just joined the board of the Ukraine energy company Burisma. At the same time, VP Joe is the point man for President Obama in the Ukraine. So the obvious next question is, where's Hunter? So I just thought it was genius when I read it. You got Robert Davi, you've got Lawrence Fox, and then you've got um, a script that like is just so hilarious and also dramatic and touches on some really important subjects. I was just like in. She's a brave woman, she, but actually she's a joyful warrior as well. And then, then you asked her, you know, what about the cast? Was that part of the thing that attracted? Was part of the, yes, yeah, yeah. Uh, so and she you, just yeah, go ahead. She just, I mean, she just loved. She loved the cast. I think, you know, I think Lawrence Fox. I'm nearly sure I remember this correctly. Like when she had all her drama with Disney when she was getting cancelled, Lawrence Fox was one of the first people to to get in touch with her. As was Robert Davi, who she adores. Robert Davi, um, and as she says herself, and you'll hear the clip now, right now, where she says, you know, it makes her really proud to be an Italian American. Let's have a listen to that. China's not our enemy. They're not bad folks, folks. I love my dad, and I just want to make him proud. You know, a lot of people are like, are you sure, you know, are you sure you want to do that? And I'm like, why, why wouldn't I do this? I've got a script that I like, I got a director that I love, and I've got a, a co-star who I am obsessed with. And then the, the icing on the cake is you got John James playing Joe Biden. Why wouldn't I do this? Look. We signed NDAs so I could go to prison for what I'm about to tell you. I could even get canceled. But I'm just a fictional character, so screw it. What's happening in there? Joe's in on it. I've never discussed businesses with my son and my brother. As a matter of fact, anyone else, period. I feel like we're like the new punk rockers of um, storytelling. All I want to do is really work on films and sets that people are excited and know that what a blessing we have as actors, as directors, as uh, cinematographers, any part of filmmaking. We're telling the story is one of the most powerful things in the world. It was, it was a pleasure working with Gina, actually, but let's hear her talk now about why she's especially fond of Robert Davi, the director, and how they bonded. My friends, it's time to party! Robert Davi's special. Like, there's something really special here. The crew has been such rock stars, so happy. You know, let's play music. Let's have amazing sandwiches. Let's, you know, you know, we're working tough hours, but you don't hear anybody, he nobody here is complaining about anything. In the airport, let's stop at the Dairy Queen first. His favorite flavor, chocolate chip. CNN did an in-depth report on it. I mean, the sets and the, the places that, they, that we found are just gorgeous. It's been such a complete pleasure that a part of me really wishes that we had, you know, like another month to go. I want a series, but I don't want it on this. <laughs> I want a series of something else with the same exact group. <laughs> and she's right. So much of this movie is out of Robert Davi's brain, uh, his uh, his artistic, the artistic side of his brain. Also, by the way, there's a lot of logistics involved in uh, directing a movie as well. So um, don't forget, you can go to mysonhunter.com to get the movie. Uh, it's distributed by Breitbart. Um, we're the producers, directed by Robert Davi, starring Lawrence Fox, Gina Carano, John James. It's the movie. Remember, this movie was suppressed mm -hmm. by big media, big tech. This movie was suppressed by them all um uh, they this is the story they don't want you to see this is let's put up some headlines there of how terrible how the left are trying to stop you from watching this uh this this deserves and this is true and this film is true and let's put up a few headlines from breitbart by the way where they have gone you know they because the fact checkers i said this i think i said this week before last the fact checkers have suddenly gone very quiet um and it's interesting because surely this would be a great opportunity for them to blast us for all the inaccuracies in the film you know mm -hmm. yeah but they have nothing to say about all the facts that we have brought up in the film and breitbart have done a fabulous series on you know finding all of those facts and just you know 
showing where we got that information from. And it's it, it's extraordinary stuff. It um, but it's interesting, you know, exactly what you've just said there, Phil. Like, so the left don't want you to watch this movie. They're like trying to stop. So, but it's interesting what the left think you should be watching. And that brings us on to the yes. next movie that I wanted to talk about, which is kind of an extraordinary thing. So this movie called How to Blow Up a Pipeline has just been acquired. It was shown at Toronto. It was showcased at Toronto and has just been bought um, for, for distribution. And it's, you know, and the left could not love this more. I'm just to give you an idea of what the story is, how to blow up a pipeline. And by the way, it's based on a book, which is basically, you know, a, how to a, guide. a how to guide. I mean, it, it's a serious academic work, by the way, about how to open, how to blow up a pipeline. So the movie is follows a crew of young environmental activists who execute a daring mission to sabotage an oil, an oil pipeline in a taut and timely thriller. So this is very timely. Forget about our film, you know, forget about our film. It's about the president of the United States yes. son. This is the one that's well, actually, taut and timely. It is timely, actually, because um, most of Europe is going to go dark and cold this winter because of of pipelines. Because of actions like because this. Because of failures to build pipelines, because of uh, failures to frack, failures to exploit their fossil fuels. So actually, it is quite t- timely. This is, if these people get their way, uh, uh, there'll be a lot more cities going dark and people going cold and people dying. How to Blow Up a Pipeline is the movie everyone needs to see right now. That's the headline on Vice, by the way. Mm-hmm. It's the movie everyone needs to see, by, see right now. Not, what not, was the headline that we had the other day in, in The New Yorker? The movie... Not the movie we want. Or the, what is not, it? not the movie the, we need or the movie we want. Yeah, yeah. But this is what, the, apparently, this is what the left says we need. A heist thriller about taking the fight for a better fury, future seriously. The film is urgent and affecting, according to Vice, by the way. And, and you know, there's just so many parts of this review, by the way, from Vice that just drove me kind of nuts. Um, the guy who made the film previously made, do you remember this film, film yeah. First Reformed? He also made a film called First Reformed, which also ended with a kind of a call to direct action right. against, against, you know, against oil Climate pipelines. Change, yeah. I mean, here's what the main character says at the end of First Reformed. He says, N- and he's, Ethan, uh, Ethan uh, Hawke, uh, our uh, old friend, Ethan Hawke. And he's Hawk. a pastor. He's a pastor. He says, no, I have not lost my faith. And he commits himself to a religious act of eco-terror, though still an ultimately self-destructive and nihilistic act. But he, that's what he commits them to. That's kind of the, yeah. that's the ultimate in the movie. Uh, yeah. And then in this review, how to blow up a pipeline, the only real acts of violence in the movie are by federal agents and oil company grunts. Who, grunts, by the way. Grunts. Who, who attempt to thwart the plan. The characters go to great pains to avoid actually hurting someone. Although they do acknowledge in debate one night about how the successful execution of this plan would definitely hurt people who rely on fossil fuels. People who rely on fossil fuels. You know, can we, let me break that down for you. As in, Everyone. People who rely on fossil fuels equals everyone. Everyone relies on fossil fuels. And everyone in in America and everyone in Europe, uh, most of America, most of Europe will die without fossil fuels in the winter uh, or will die without fossil fuels in the summer for air conditioning in the the south. It's... um, that is, it's, that, oh, no, that's, it's, what, it's, that's what they say is important nowadays. So then just another few moments out of this, out of this review from Vice, you know, the film starts with an act of sabotage, cutting the tires of an SUV and leaving a bright yellow one page manifesto left on the window. Sabotage um, closes out at the end of the movie too. A new group blows up a yacht and leaves the same manifesto attached, attached to a pole nearby. Here's the last line. But with a wink and a nudge, you can almost hear the movie say that the sabotage doesn't need to stop when the credits roll. You go girlfriend. Um, so basically, you know, here is a movie that is being celebrated wildly by the left that is encouraging violence, which inevitably in a situation like this, if you're dealing with pipelines, you're going to kill someone in the effort, by the way. You're totally going to kill. This is, this is, this is an incendiary. This is incendiary, right? Yeah. <laughs> I mean, that's the whole point of it, right? Fossil fuels are actually, you know, they do, they go, they go on fire. So this is, I mean, these people are extra, but this is what they're pushing. They're pushing this kind of activism. And we're in a situation, as Phelan says, where the lights, you know, if, the, if, the, if there's a bad winter in Europe, the lights will go out in Europe. People will, people will literally freeze to death. And the other thing, which we haven't talked about much here, is people are also facing starvation because fertilizer is made from natural gas. Unfortunately, most of these eco-activists don't know anything 
I used to always make that joke when I went to college campuses. You know, they don't know they don't know anything about renewables. They think the trees don't grow, for example. That's why they get very excited when a tree is cut down. And of course, trees are a renewable resource, but they don't even like hydro. They don't like hydropower, which does work. Um, they don't like nuclear, which really does work and is zero CO2 emissions. So, I mean, these are the kind of people who are basically going to terrorize us back into the into living in caves if they got their way. And I'm, I'm, I'm so amused. I looked at some footage earlier, the people who made this movie, and you can see them on the stage in Toronto, and they're like, you know, they've never missed a meal. They've all been brought up in gorgeous homes. Mm -hmm. You know, these people have benefited from every kind of fossil fuel and continue to benefit from every kind of fossil fuel because I have still to hear of a movie that is lit um, and that is air conditioned and has all of all of the moving parts are done using renewable energy. I have not heard of such a thing and they didn't do it. Uh, well, that reminds me of um, the age of stupid. Remember that? Oh, uh, yeah. My old yeah. friend, Franny Armstrong, yeah, and yeah. they pretended to have a premiere uh, oh, that's in, right. in, in New York that was uh, was completely renewable, uh, only powered by fossil fuels. And let's play that video of me discovering the secret, uh, the dirty little secret of the uh, of the age of stupid and all these eco warriors. Let's play that now. And here we have a little secret of the environmental movement of the age of stupid. They claim that all their power comes from the sun. But for this tribe of environmentalists, it seems that oil and gas and diesel is essential. This, I think, is the lost tribe of the environmental hypocriticus. Maybe not so lost. Very prominent tribe, but little seen and little reported on. This is one of the first reports we've ever had showing how the environmentalist hypocriticus actually lives in the real world. They claim that they, go, that they survive by solar power. But we know, and we can see here, that they actually survive by using dirty carbon fuels. And I can see some of the tribe watching me now. I think I may have alerted or angered some of the alpha males of the tribe. So I'm going to leave carefully and try and not excite the more excitable members of the tribe. So there you are. They were using um, generators, noisy diesel generators, whilst claiming that, that I think that's why um, they threw me out from the premiere when I started asking those kind of awkward questions. So what else is... Uh, well, the other, the, so this other story I found in the New York Times this past weekend, just, I loved it. So look at this lovely girl. There's a lovely girl there. Uh, I should have showed her probably second, by the way. But anyway... So this this lovely girl, by the way, she has an amazing story. She has an amazing story. This woman made a, a documentary called Jihad Rehab. And the headline in New York Times kind of tells you everything. Sundance liked her documentary on terrorism until Muslim critics didn't. The film festival gave Meg Smacker's Jihad Rehab a coveted spot mm -hmm. in its 2022 lineup, but apologized after an outcry over race and her approach. Just extraordinary. I mean, this is just extraordinary. So Meg Smacker felt exhilarated last November after 16 months filming inside a Saudi rehabilitation center for accused terrorists. She learned that her documentary, Jihad Rehab, was invited to the 2022 Sundance Festival, one of the most prestigious. So here she was thinking, I'm I, on I, a roll I, now. I've this is it. it. I've made it. Her documentary centers on four former Guantanamo detainees sent to a rehab center in Saudi Arabia who had opened their lives to her, speaking of youthful attraction to Al-Qaeda and the Taliban, of torture endured and of regrets. Film critics, by the way, just loved it. So, and for they example, warned, conservatives might bridle at these human portraits, but after the reviews, after the festival, the reviews were strong. It was the, was the, the Guardian. Guardian. The absence of absolutes is what's most enriching. I love that, right? This is a movie, this is The Guardian again, this is a movie for intelligent people looking to have their preconceived notions challenged. Variety loved it. The film feels like a miracle and an interrogative act of defiance. And by the way, everyone felt like that. 100% positive reviews. Everyone was loving on it and loving on it and loving on it. And so the attacks that they talked about that they thought would come from the right did not come from the right. The attacks came from the left. Uh, Arab and Muslim filmmakers and their white supporters accused Miss Smacker 
of Islamophobia and American propaganda. Some suggested her race was disqualifying. You see, you being a white girl, sure, why would a white girl be able to know or learn anything about being an Arab? A white woman who presumed to tell the story of Arab men. God between us and all harm. Mm. So basically, if you're white, you can't learn anything about another race. You can't. You just can't. It's like being disabled, right? So Sundance leaders, don't you love this now? Sundance, they're such rock stars. So brave. Sundance, brave, but so intelligent, Phil. I'm so sensitive. So attuned. Anyway, here's what Sundance did. They'd reversed themselves and apologized. And I love this. We've talked on this podcast before about Abigail Disney. Abigail Disney is an heir to the Disney fortune. And I remember an interview with her a couple of years ago. We definitely talked about it on this podcast where she was really distressed by the money she had. And she found it really difficult to, 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 work, pe- out. to work out what to do with it. And, you know, we had some fabulous fabulous suggestions most of them involved giving it to us uh, most of them involved giving it to us and that's another thing for you all to remember don't forget to donate to the unreported story society.com you know you love the work that we do so don't yes don't hold back yeah, i mean we definitely need you buying, and by the way we have we have a we have a matching grant we have a matching grant right now of fifty thousand dollars so people please do go to unreported yeah. story society well, well, and whatever. abigail abigail should go to the unreported story society.com and give what you can. But Abigail, Bre- so Abigail Disney, God between us and all harm. So she has a real dilemma not knowing what to do with the money. And of course, we've loads of suggestions. She just give it all away, by the way. Very, very easy. So, 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 so easy, by the way. But anyway, she had loved on this doc- on this documentary. By the way, not alone had she loved on it. She was the executive producer of Jihad Rehab. And she had described it as freaking brilliant in an email to Miss Smacker. And then, just like that, just like that, she disavowed it. Mm-hmm. So, can you do that? Apparently, you can. And Miss Disney wrote in an open letter, she wrote a whole open letter, which I haven't even bothered to read because I'm not interested really in what crazy notions this woman has. But here's, what, here's a piece of what she said She said, the film landed like a truckload of hate. Miss Smacker's film has become near untouchable, unable to reach audiences. Prominent festivals rescinded invitations and critics in the documentary world took to social media and pressured investors, advisors, and even her friends to withdraw wow. names from the credits. And she's close to broke. This is a woman in her 40s, by the way. Her, she's living with her parents, you know, and she's got this... Pro- this. Wo- and by the way, she really worked hard on this thing. I mean, it's kind of an amazing, her story. I wanted to kind of give you just what she had done. It's... I mean, amazing. So here she, here's this Miss Smacker, right? She was a firefighter. Miss Smacker was a 21-year-old firefighter in California when aeroplanes struck the World Trade Center on September the 11th. She heard firefighters cry for vengeance and wondered, how did this happen? Hmm. Looking for answers, she hitchhiked through Afghanistan, settled in the ancient city of Sana'a, Yemen, for half a decade where she learned Arabic and taught firefighting. I mean, she's very cool, by the way. Then she obtained a master's from Stanford University in filmmaking and turned to a place Yemeni friends had spoken of, the Mohammed bin Naif Counseling and Care Center in Riyadh. That's, that's the rehab place. And that's the place that so, she so did when, the documentary so, on. So when you get released from Guantanamo Bay or you're captured, I think, or you're captured in the field, the Saudis, I don't know what they do, but one of the things they do is, if you want, is they will send you to this rehab where you will be basically de-radicalized. And by the way, I I don't know what happens. We don't. Yeah, I haven't watched the documentary, but apparently it's a very nice place. By the way, the Saudis spend loads of money and they've got swimming pools and everything. The idea of it is that you will be de-radicalized from from terrorism. But just to get back to Miss Disney, because I just have to say this, I just love this so much. So Miss Disney, part of the reason that she, of course, now has come to a new understanding Mm -hmm. of why this is a terrible, terrible documentary, is that. So Miss Smacker in the documentary interviews these four individuals who are in this rehab, right? And now, of course, Miss Disney has decided. And of course, they describe Miss Ti- Miss Disney, by the way, as a titan in the documentary world. I can translate that for people who don't know what titan means. So a titan in the documentary world means somebody with a huge amount of money yes. that they're willing to spend in the documentary world. That's what makes you a titan. Yeah, it doesn't make you smart. By the way, we're looking for titans. Anyone get in touch with us. If Ma- got- on Reported Story on reported Society. On ReportedStorySociety.com. Fabulous. But here's what I love you about Miss Disney. Titan. You could be our titan. We'd be so tight with our titan, wouldn't we, Phil? I've, I've been looking all my life for a titan. Always looking for a titan. So here's what Miss Disney says. A person cannot freely consent to anything in a carceral system. 
particularly one in a notoriously violent dictatorship. So her issue now, her issue, Disney, yes. Miss Disney's issue now is the fact that the documentary interviewed guys who are basically in prison, right? Yes. This is nonsense, of course. Well, well the Saudis, the Saudis let her speak to 150. Most of them waved, waved her off. They weren't forced to speak. No. And she found four who were willing yes. to talk. But, but basically, I think what's really interesting is, you know, a lot of, you know, some of the people who are, who are supporting Miss Smacker have said, nonsense, nonsense, nonsense. There's a very long tradition I've in been, documentary. We've been, in, we've been in prisons. We've interviewed people in prisons, you know, um, and everyone publishes what we, everyone published what we, what we got from them. Um, you know, as, as the New York Times pointed out, there was a thin blue line. Uh, that, that, you know, it's often about giving prisoners a voice as well. Um, but Miss Disney decided when, you know, when, when her friend, this is what I always say, you know, people talk, what's well, a very controversial documentary. It's not controversial. What they mean is that all your friends agree with it. It's somebody shouting loudly and saying something that all his friends agree with is, is not controversial. What's controversial is when all your friends hate what you've done, but can't poke factual uh, errors in it, but just don't like the truth. So one part of this New York Times story that I just adored was that in the middle of all of this backlash, more than 230 filmmakers signed a letter denouncing the documentary, the majority of whom had not seen the documentary. Yeah. Can you believe that? Yeah. So it's exactly the same as what happened to us with My Son Hunter, where we got these thousands and thousands of words of criticism in some of these highly respected institutions, you know, like mm. the Daily Beast. And what was the other one, Phelan? No, the, no, the Beast actually had seen it. Um, the Daily Cause and the Guardian both yeah. wrote, I think, 5,000 words. Without, without having seen it, you know. Yeah. But uh, but basically, this woman's life has basically kind of been ruined. I mean, it's 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 just a disaster. She has maxed out on her credit cards and she's 42. She's bar borrowed money from her parents. This is not the Sundance debut of her dreams. I don't have the money or influence to fight this out, she says, running her hands back through her hair. I'm not sure I see a way out. It's just a horrible situation, but just shows you how fickle the people at Sundance are, how yeah. fickle how cowardly. Abigail Disney is, who was an executive producer. So she was in on this during the early parts of this production. She was in on every aspect of it and then threw it under the bus when it became slightly unpopular yeah. because of the fact that the, the, the director is basically white. Basically, that's, yeah. that's really all that's really wrong with it. But we have, you know, the other story that we wanted to bring you was this oh, yeah. extraordinary yeah. story so, so look, from North Dakota. It's crazy. You can do anything you want here in L.A. and New York and be out in Beale you can, uh, in, in five minutes. The member of the, you know, people commit robberies, all that. And don't think that the toxicity and the the, the bad ideas and bad politics stays in on the coasts. It moves to the cities because many cities are now liberal. And it could be in cities in, in very, very Republican areas. So you may have seen the story of Kaylor Ellison, 18, who is allegedly murdered uh, by Shannon Brandt uh, for, being, for the crime of being a Republican. And this comes after two weeks after President Biden basically declared uh, Trump supporters as, as terrorists. And two weeks later, someone uh, drove over a, someone he called a Trump supporter. Now, if Trump had called... Uh, Democrats, terrorists, and two weeks later, someone had killed someone. Quoting those words, the, the media would we would we would know everything about everything about everything. Here, it's very hard to find anything about the story except those facts. Shannon Brandt, forty-one, uh, was charged with vehicular homicide. Told the police he did it because uh, Keeler, who was eighteen, was a uh, extreme Republican. Uh, Shannon Brandt got out on fifty thousand dollars bail and is is back with his family, back with his oh business, God. and back with his friends. And that is how um, the, the the madness of the coast spreads to 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 a city near you. Watch out for it. It's really terrible. And we're just going to end up with a we have um, a little recipe because I haven't done a recipe for a long time. And yes. this is very very simple. Again, I'm using the air fryer, loving on the air fryer. We're literally never turning the oven on these days, um, uh, which is good actually because mm -hmm. we've got a bit of a funny oven which doesn't open, doesn't go on very easily. It's kind of a whole drama. But anyway, so we're loving on the on on this. So this is a very simple, really simple breakfast idea. Yeah. Just, you'll see me here, I, I, I buttered those two slices of bread and I'm going to put the buttered side down in the air fryer. I've got the air fryer at 400. Basically, I never change the temperature on the air fryer. Don't give out to me. Um, so put that, pre, you can preheat it. Don't, you don't have to always preheat, by the way, the, the air fryer. And then I've curled around these pieces of bacon 
around the sides. You'll see what I'm doing, trying to create a little bit of a well there, right? And then into that well, I'm breaking an egg, breaking just an egg in there, putting that in there about 10 minutes. Take it out at about eight minutes, by the way, and you'll see what I've just gone and done. I've just, because I just can't ever put enough cheese on things. I've just dolloped a bunch of Gruyere on top. As I said, give it about, I think I give it about 10 minutes. Your air fryer might be faster. And then get, getting it out could be a little bit tricky, but you know, because it's very hot in there. But wasn't that a delicious, simple, yummy breakfast? Sort of a sort of a little Irish breakfast yes. on, you know, in in very, very fast. Mm-hmm. And I love that. And we always have tasty. eggs very with tasty. sriracha. So sriracha, which by the way, I've heard that there's a sriracha shortage coming. Yeah, so go out and make sure you have got your sriracha because the, there's a winter coming apparently. A, please remember to go buy mysonhunter.com, mysonhunter.com, buy and mirror to your smart TV. And once you learn how to mirror to your smart TV, you'll never go back. You'll just love it. And if you have a fo- any difficulty doing it, find a young person. The young people know how to do this stuff. And if you want to donate by, as I said, we do have um, a matching donation right now going on. Go to unreportedstorysociety.com and give what you can. Unreportedstorysociety.com. Mm-hmm. Give what you can. Please. We have a 50,000. We have a very generous donor who is going to donate $50,000, but we have to match it. So until next time, Be well, do well, and take care. Thank you. Bye. Bye.